and gentlemen, welcome to the You've Got Jokes Live Lounge, introducing the amazing Bumbi. Hello. Hi. Oh, okay, there we go, there we, there we go, all right. Hey, 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 okay, okay, whoa, all right. Um, yeah, my name's Bumbi. Listen, um, pandemic, pandemic was, was, was tough, right? Um, I don't know, stuff like, you remember like at the, when, they first, when they did the first lockdown and they said, you know, everybody has to work from home. The thing is, I drive a cab, so immediately I'm like, oh, what the hell am I supposed to do? You know what I mean? Just ended up playing the taxi missions on GTA, like it was, it was peak. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, I love video games, love video games. Also, I hate video games as well because like, like GTA, for example, you play GTA and you can feel like a badass, right? But then the truth is, you spend real money to get fake money, to buy fake clothes, so your fake character will look like a badass. That's what's really happening, you know? And you can imagine like this, like somebody in a meeting somewhere, like suggesting this idea that like, people are gonna spend real money to buy fake stuff. Like, people must have thought it was a crackhead or something, but no, this is what we do. We spend real money to get fake stuff. At this point, I'm spending more money on fake clothes than doing real clothes, it's ridiculous. But yeah, lockdown was tough, and a lot of stuff, you know, definitely hit me, uh, you know, financially, you know, uh, definitely took a hit financially, and, um, but the thing is, I feel like my childhood prepared me for that, right? Because I grew up poor, right? In fact, we were, we were so poor growing up that my dad had to put a cardboard box over my head and pretend it was a TV. And, you know, that wasn't so bad, but it was one of those TVs where you had to smack the side of it to get it to work, you know, like, it was like that. You know, a lot though, I want to watch the news, you know what I mean, it was like that. Um, <laughs> Hard meeting women during the lockdown as well, hard meeting women. And you know, I, I wish I could say it was because of the lockdown, but you know, <laughs> there's a point where you're just like, what, you're still using that as an excuse? Come on, come on. <laughs> but I did, I did meet this one woman though, I met this one woman, um, got along real well, you know, went out, hung out for the day, it was really nice. Um, you know, really got along well, and then you know, I took her home, right? And then I was like kissing, started getting real like passionate, really intense passionate, right? But all of a sudden she pushes me off and she says, stop. Stop. She says, I want to abstain. I had to take a deep breath. And I said, you know what? It's okay. It's not a problem. It's fine. And then I ejaculated on her stomach. <laughs> and she was mad. She started shouting at me, cussing me out, <laughs> calling me all kinds of names. Turns out she meant something else by abstain, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> But um, but I think the reason why I have trouble with women, though, the thing, reason I have trouble meeting women is um, because I used to watch a lot of porn. Uh, I used to watch a lot of porn, and I, I don't anymore. I stopped. I mean, I um, I haven't watched porn for a long time now. Like, I'm not sure how long it's been. But it's been a long time. Like, I feel like at this point, it's been at least eight, nine, maybe even ten minutes. You know, it's been it's been a long time. But I had to stop. Though. I had to stop because it's no good for you, man. It messes you up, man. Like, I can remember this one time when I was in school, right? And, you know, the teacher asked me to stay behind, like, just me, after class. Now, I had to watch some, you know, sexy teacher fetish porn the night before, so in my mind, I'm thinking, damn, I know it's about to go down, right? <laughs> so I'm like, listen, let me just, why don't we just skip the chit-chat, take off our clothes, and I can get to work on earning that A. Yeah, he was not impressed. Like, he was, <laughs> he did not like that at all. <laughs> But, um, you know, people say it's like it's hard to, hard to talk to women now because, you know, the whole Me Too movement. They say it's hard to talk to women now because of Me Too. And I disagree with that. I feel like if you have trouble talking to women now, you probably weren't very good at it to begin with, to be honest. You know what I mean? Like, you, you know what I mean? Let's, let's keep it real. Let's keep it all the way ahead. Like, you sucked at it before. You suck at it now. The only difference is, is that, you know, women are more likely to tell you that you suck now. You know, they're not, they're not appeasing your ego anymore. You know, that's what's happening. They're just like, they're, it was never appreciated. And now they're just letting you know. But the Me Too, like the, all the celebrities that, uh, you know, they got name dropped, like all those names that came out, some are still coming out. Out of all the celebrity names that came out, the one that really hit me the hardest was Bill Cosby. Because, um, I mean, you've got to understand, I was a massive Bill Cosby fan as a kid, you know, like, uh, you know, Cosby Show, maybe you used to watch that show, and this guy was, he was intelligent, he was funny, he was such an inspiring figure, right? And I remember I used to watch the Cosby Show, and I used to look at Bill Cosby and just think to myself, I wish he was my dad. You know, can you believe that? I used to look at Bill Cosby and wish he was my dad. 
Now, all these years later, after everything that's happened, after all the horrible and terrible things he's done, I look at Bill Cosby now and I just think to myself, maybe he is. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's my time. My name is Burmay. Thank you very much. <laughs>